Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Teamer Thousand Year Storm deck. A card that I haven't really played with since uh, it's releasing Gills of Ravnica. But now we've got a bunch of new tools that uh, play quite well with Thousand Year Storm. So we'll uh, quickly go over the entire deck list. So this definitely falls under the kind of jank category, but uh, it can do some powerful things, can even win on turn five if you've got uh, right draws. Of course, uh, doesn't play all that well against more aggressive decks, unless we're lucky enough to draw Gates Ablaze, which is the only real interaction we have in the main deck. Uh, Teferi Time Raveler lines up quite well against uh, Thousand Year Storm, so that's also not a card we want to face. And counter spells in general are quite good against us too, since they can just counter the few cards that matter. So overall, not a deck that's going to win very often, but when it does, it's going to do so in spectacular fashion. So first off, let's read A Thousand Year Storm, a 6-mana mythic enchantment saying, Whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell we've cast before it this turn, and we can choose new targets for those copies. So this deck is all about ramping out A Thousand Year Storm as soon as possible, and then having a bit of leftovers in hand that you can then cast to generate an advantage with A Thousand Year Storm in play. So what cards do we have in order to ramp? The best one at 2 mana is a Growth Spiral, letting us draw a card and put a land from our hand onto the battlefield. A turn 2 Spiral can lead to a turn 3 Root, which lets us search up 2 lands, including Gates as well, that we can put on the battlefield tapped. And our mana base consists only of Gates and basic lands, and we'll get to that in a second. Then another important ramp card in this deck is Beanstalk Giant. Now, Grow Spiral and Root are cards you happily play before playing Thousand Year Storm. Beanstalk Giant is a card you kind of want to keep in hand for as long as possible, but of course if it's the only ramp card you have available, you'll still use the adventure. Fertile Footsteps, which lets you search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield and then shuffle your library. The important part here is that the land comes into play untapped, so we can search a basic land and then have access to that mana provided by that basic land, which means that if you have a Thousand Year Storm in play, let's say you've already cast two spells before casting the Fertile Footsteps. Now if you cast Fertile Footsteps, all of a sudden you get to search up three basic lands, put those on the battlefield untapped. So it's basically like you cast the Fertile Footsteps for free, but you also added one to the storm count of a Thousand Year Storm. So that's kind of how the engine gets going. And of course, every now and then, if the Thousand Year Storm plan doesn't work out, you can always fall back on the Beanstalk Giant to win the game as well. Then another important card that you want to keep in hand for as long as possible when playing this deck is Rose Thorn Acolyte. We're not really interested in the 3-mana 2-3 part of the card, but we're very much interested in the Seasonal Ritual Adventure that can add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool. The reason this is so good is because it combos quite well with Thousand Year Storm. So if we have our Mythic Enchantment in play, and we have a hand with a Rose Thorn Acolyte and some other instants and sorceries. We can either use the Seasonal Ritual to kind of kick us off with the Storm Count on Thousand Year Storm, and then our next spell will be doubled by Thousand Year Storm and so on. Sometimes it's the other way around, and we want to keep the Rose Thorn Acolyte as one of the last spells we cast, so that we can generate additional mana if mana is the constraint, as opposed to maybe drawing cards. So the sequencing with Thousand Year Storm in play can also be pretty intricate, since uh, sometimes you need to prioritize making more mana, other times you need to prioritize drawing more cards, and uh, sometimes it can even change in the same turn. Sometimes you need a little bit of mana early, and then you need to save up your Acolytes later in the turn to make more mana so you can potentially cast a more expensive spell. So things can get pretty complicated. Then another important piece of the puzzle, of course, is Opt. Scry one draw card at insta speed for just one mana. So this is also a card that we often want to keep in hand for as long as possible. So we can cast it once we do get a Thousand Year Storm in play as a cheap one mana spell. Sometimes you want to kick things off with an Opt so you can cast your more expensive instants and sorceries later to get those doubled. Other times you might actually want to save the Opt so the Scry one and draw card can be doubled by a Thousand Year Storm instead, and the Scry 1, especially once you start doubling it multiple times with Thousand Year Storm, gives you a ton of card selection to find the specific cards you need at a certain point. Then as we mentioned earlier, we've got four copies of Gates Ablaze, which is the main interaction we have for opposing creatures, dealing X damage 
to each creature where X is the number of gates we control. We've got 12 gates in the deck, and we can also search those up with Circuitous Root, so we've got access to plenty of gates for our gates ablaze. Then another very important piece of the puzzle here is Escape to the Wild. This is the card that really pushes the strategy over the top when it starts going off, as we get to exile the top 5 cards of our library, and we can play cards exiled this way until the end of our next turn, and we can also play an additional land this turn, so it gives us access to a ton of extra cards, can help us find a Thousand Year Storm, and once we have a Thousand Year Storm in play, this can dig us very deep to find all these mana producing cards like the Rose Thorn Acolyte and the Beanstalk Giant. And uh, yeah, once we get to copy Escape to the Wilds a couple of times with Thousand Year Storm in play, we can pretty much draw our entire deck, or at least put it in exile. And once we get to put our entire deck in exile, it's usually pretty straightforward to win from there, since our actual win condition is the one copy of Fae of Wishes, which has the granted adventure, which is also sorcery, that gets doubled by Thousand Year Storm, letting us search up a non-creature card we own from outside the game, meaning our sideboard, uh, reveal it and put it into our hand, and then the most straightforward win condition after we've drawn our entire deck is to just search up Jace Wielder of Mysteries. We can maybe use Rose Thorn Acolyte to generate a bunch of blue mana and then uh, cast a Jace and win the game on the spot. There's a bunch of other cards in the sideboard too that's definitely still a work in progress. But we also have a couple basic lands since Fae of Wishes lets us search up lands as well. And given that we've cast a number of Escape to the Wilds, we can very easily play all these additional lands that we can search up with uh, all the copies from the Granted Adventure and put all those lands in play. And we've got some other cards that we could search up. Expansion Explosion and Electro Dominance can be burn spells to kill the opponent if we've got a ton of mana. Plain White Celebration can gain life and make some tokens. Sundering Stroke can also deal a lot of damage. We've got Beacon Bolt as some more creature removal, Flame Sweep if we need a sweeper. Clear the mind in case something goes wrong and we need to shuffle our graveyard back into our library. We've got the Thrill of Possibility and Radical Idea as cheap cantrips if we just need to increase our storm count. Callous Dismissal can return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand and a mass of one. Sometimes it does come up that you need to bounce your Rose Thorn Acolyte if you actually cast a creature half of the card. And if you return the Acolyte back to your hand, then you can use the Adventure Ritual again. And that way you get to produce additional mana as well, so that can sometimes come up. And we also have a shock in case we just need to burn the opponent out, or if we need another cheap instant to get the storm chain going with a thousand year storm. And then taking a quick look at the mana base, we've got the 12 gates as we discussed, so for Simic Guild Gate, for Gruul Guild Gate, for Izzet Guild Gate, as well as a lot of basic lands, 6 forests, 4 mountains and 6 islands. It's very important to keep as many basic lands in the deck as possible to search up with Beanstalk Giant to then produce additional mana, because of course once you're out of basics then the Beanstalk Giant is not going to be able to produce additional mana if we've got a bit of a storm count going. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, double opts into Beanstalk Giant for a bit of ramp. If possible, we want to keep the opts in hand for as long as possible, but uh, I might need to fire one off just to dig us a bit deeper and find our enchantment in the first place. Facing turn 1 Mountain Tinsery Dodger, so the Monorad Cavalcade deck is uh, by far our worst matchup since they're usually much faster than we are and we don't have much interaction for the matchup. So for now I guess we'll just play Guildgate, say go. And then the opt is going to be digging for a Gates Ablaze, as well as uh, a Thousand Year Storm. All right, double Fervent Champion. So it's pretty much Gates Ablaze or Bust at this point. Don't think uh, I can realistically survive without it. Just a land for now. It's no gates ablaze. So I guess in that case, I'm just gonna beanstalk giants, get an island, cast opts, and hope for the best. Not gonna show the opponent mountain yet in case they don't play around gates ablaze here. Ginger Brute as well. Alright, so we get uh, three looks at a Gates Ablaze. A 
Infuriate as a pump spell. Alright. So we're not dead yet. But pretty close. The problem here is even if we do find Gates Ablaze, my hand is all lands, so we don't really have a great follow up. Roots and lands. Alright, good game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Uh, don't love having Fay of Wishes in my opening hand, so I think this is a mulligan. This is better. And then probably got a bottom acolyte for now. Looking for green mana so we can grow spiral. We've got a bit of interaction with Gates Ablaze this time around. Right, there's a forest, so for now I can play Guild Gates. Facing Fairy Miscreant, so maybe some sort of blue-eyed flyers deck. Winged Words, yep. Well, Gates of Blaze should be decent in this matchup. And there's our Thousand Year Storm. Alright, so let's uh, Spiral. And we just want to hit our land drops here. Only two gates in play, so if they play Empyrean Eagle, I'm not going to be able to kill it. So finding more gates would also be good. Alright, Healer's Hawk, don't mind seeing that. And Hypnotic Sprite, alright, so... Definitely interested in casting Gates Ablaze. If we don't Gates Ablaze now, we risk our opponent untapping, playing some more Flyers and playing Sephara, which makes everything indestructible. So as much as I want to cast these ramp spells, I think it's just too important that we wipe the board here, and I don't want to risk casting Grow Spiral first just to hope to find an untapped land. Alright, so hopefully that bought us enough time. And we can continue setting up here. Let's grab some gates. And next turn, probably playing our enchantments. There's the Imperial Eagle, Loyal Pegasus. I usually don't need more than 1,000 Year Storm, but of course having multiples means uh, you get even more advantage from them. But I don't know if we'll have the time to play the second copy. Deploy, main phase, so this looks like maybe a Sephara. Nope. Just gonna hit our face. Alright, well, I guess we're escaping, hoping to find Gates Ablaze, or just hoping to win this turn, which is not impossible. I could Rose Thorn first, that way I get double the escape. That seems better for now than uh, the other way around. So we'll escape, leaving semi guild gate untapped, or I guess I want Redman untapped since Gates Ablaze is probably more important to find. And I also need two untapped lands. Well, did not find the Gates Ablaze. I do get to play two additional lands this turn. I guess I can cast an opt. And then draw into both Gates Ablaze and an untapped land. That's neither untapped land, so now I just need Gates Ablaze, I guess. Get a couple more looks. Well, there's a Gates Ablaze, so. I believe we can play three untapped lands. 
And now I guess I can also Beanstalk and keep going. So... Let's grab some more lands. So four mana. I don't have any Rose Thorns left. I do have another Beanstalk, so that's even more mana here. So yeah, let's keep going. So what I really need to find is a Rose Thorn Acolyte. Twenty-two cards remaining. So let's um, cast another opt, shall we? Don't need roots. Escape could be good. Don't have many untapped lands left in my library, so issue, but it is a way to essentially draw my entire deck. So then we should be good to go. I should have one more untapped forest in my deck. Which lets me Acolyte, which then lets me cast the uh, Fae of Wishes to win the game. So don't need Beanstalk anymore. So yeah, let's escape. And this should find the last untapped forests, which finds Acolytes. Which uh, should win us the game. There's a forest. Play forests. This just needs to make blue mana. Yeah, let's just make a bunch of blue. Find Jace and win. So we... Set out to turn, trying to find Gates Ablaze. We found the Gates Ablaze, but as it turns out, we could also just win the game. So where's my Fae of Wishes? Resolve all. Get the Jace. Can also grab some more basic lands, which I can also put in play thanks to Escape to the Wilds. Can get a Flame Sweep. You can also get Expansion, which can also copy the Granted on the stack, but it's not going to be necessary. Plain White Celebration for some life gain. Shock to maybe burn them out. So you can pretty much choose how you want to win the game here. But Jace seems like the most straightforward, so let me try and find my Jace here. I've got a lot of cards in hand, so it's not easy. There we go. And my opponent explodes. Sweet. All right, on to the next one. Hmm, this hand's not actually all that great. Missing green mana, no ramp. Acolyte doesn't really count. I think this is a mulligan, this is much better. And I don't mind putting Fail Fishes on the bottom. We're gonna shuffle our deck at some point, but... Don't really want to have Fail Fishes in my opening hand anyway. Uh oh. Well, against Mono Rats, we're gonna need the Gates Ablaze. Luckily, we have one. Aha, uh -huh, I see it's Rakdos. I think I'm gonna wait one more turn on the Gates Ablaze, and for now, I'll just uh, Beanstalk, I guess. And usually you want to keep the Rose Thorn in hand for as long as possible. You rarely play it out as a 2-3. Alright. Would Lucky Charm help? It is nice with Acolyte and Beanstalk, but I don't think it does enough. 
and the slots are pretty like limited in the deck. So I can do this. And the plan B is just to beat down with Beanstalk Giant. So if something happens to the Fae of Wishes, you still have a game plan at least. And Opt is also a card that you usually want to keep in hand until after you found a Thousand Year Storm. So they don't have Death Touch this turn. I guess I'll Opt first. Um, sure. Yeah, so I get to smash for eights. And then I can maybe play second beanstalk, then gates of blaze to wipe the board and attack. So we're not really storming off this game, but whatever works, I guess. Escape is good. So I could have fun and escape. I could go for the win and play Beanstalk Giant. There we go. So right now, one, two, three, four. This would kill this. And it would kill them. All right, fine. So yeah, we found a Thousand Year Storm. Only had the Rose Thorn in hand, so we would have had to find like an Opt or a Grow Spiral to really start going off there. Uh, sure, so we are playing quite a few lands, so hopefully we draw one. Temple of Triumph. Uh, good draw. All right, we're kind of doing it. Now again, I think I'm holding the opts. I mean, I, I could cast the opt just to hit my six land roll, basically. But I might escape before casting Thousand Year Storm and then use escape to kind of ramp out the storm and take it from there. So an aggressive red white tech. I want to keep the beanstalk until after a thousand year storm, so yeah, let's just escape here. Merriment, sure. Don't worry. I brought company. I just want to wait for as long as possible and set up this Thousand Year Storm, basically. The more time my opponent gives me to set up, the more likely I am to combo off in the same turn. So here... I could escape again. If I hit two untapped lands, I can root as well. I think that's a play, and then wait on Storm another turn. Alright, didn't find an untapped land, but I'll take them. 
So just play two tap lands here, I suppose. And then next turn I should be able to win. Yeah, maybe I should grow Spiral since I have two opts in hand already, that should be plenty. Alright. So yeah, next turn I'm definitely in a position to win. So hopefully I don't die here. Alright, so now the sequencing is pretty important. So I want to get max value out of the beanstalk. I think I'll start with one opt. Now I can roast thorn and then beanstalk and then opt again. I think that's the sequence, that way I get to see the most cards with the opts. And the beanstalk will be mana neutral. And it's also important to leave one of each basic in the deck, so you have the option of getting those later. Alright, so I could root and then opt, but then I won't be able to do anything else. If I opt into another Rose Thorn or into another Beanstalk, then we can actually start generating mana. Gates of Blaze is fine too, but I think I'm gonna get greedy here. Escape. I've already played land for the turn, so escape doesn't actually help me. Unless I were to find a Rose Thorn, but I only have two of those in the deck. Or a Beanstalk, I suppose. But yeah, this is the card that would kind of win me the game. If I find one of those, I guess I'll keep it. And then I gotta hope for... Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I can keep Fail Wishes. I need Rose Thorn or Beanstalk Giant here. Land. That's too bad. Alright, let's just ramp a bit then. But we might be dead on the way back here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we're just dead on board. So yeah, if I hit one of those two cards, we would have won, because then escape basically draws my entire deck. Alright, we're on the play, we've got our Thousand Year Storm, we've got our ramp, so this might be the one. Yeah, hopefully it's a mid-range deck and not a Simic Flash deck. Because we also can beat counter spells. Yeah, it's Simic Flash, isn't it? Nah, let's just hope this resolves. Get our two red gates. Nah, never mind, we're ramping there as well. Alright, escape is perfect. So what turn is this? Turn 4. I've got a thousand year storm in play. And next turn we could do some powerful things. Mm, 
All right, so I need this escape to find like uh, an opt, I guess, or an acolyte would be good. A combination of those. Right, there's opts. Don't have two untapped plants, sadly, so I need to beanstalk first and then opt. And then I'll get a green source in case I find acolytes to make a bunch of mana. Sadly, Beanstalk doesn't help, but I'm probably going to keep it for next turn then. And if I find Acolyte now, I can still use a Beanstalk and keep going off. Alright, one more draw for Rosethorn, there we go. Alright. So green... Solve all, green, green, and a red, I guess. Alright, so next up we'll cast the escape. Don't have many untapped plants left. So I gotta make sure to keep green mana in case I find another rose thorn. So do I get to draw my entire deck? If I do, then I'm guaranteed to find another rose thorn. Rose thorn makes blue mana. Fae of Wishes, Fae of Wishes finds Jace, Jace wins the game. Yeah, I think we got there. So one card remaining. Where's the Rose Thorn? Adventure. So I think I still have one Rose Thorn left that I can adventure, if I'm not mistaken. So I need to make one green for that, because I don't have enough blue here to fave wishes for Jace. But I guess I have a bunch of lands in the sideboard, so if I fail Wishes, then I can just get those basics from the sideboard. And I get to place those thanks to the extra land drops from Escape, so I should be fine here. Even without... Uh, and I still have a couple land drops I can make. So 7, 8... So I should have enough here. Fail Wishes... Resolve all, get the Jace, get a couple lands. Another cool thing you can do is if you get Expansion Explosion, you can copy the Fae of Wishes that's still on the stack, but it's not going to be necessary here. Can just get whatever we want. Sometimes you can also Callous Dismissal, bounce your Roaster and Acolyte to make extra mana. But yeah, Potent sees the writing on the wall. We would just play Jace, mill ourselves, win the game. So, what turn was this? It was pretty quickly, like turn 5, turn 6. Draw our entire deck and win. So, it might not happen every game. And against aggressive decks, we might not get there if we don't find our Gates Ablaze. But once we start going off, it's actually relatively consistent. We just need a single Thousand Year Storm in play. Pretty fun to play against Sparky as well. So for now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.